I'm Shorakat Kazarian. I'm the creator of the show The Phoenix and the Mountain in Centric Abstraction in the 80s. Um, the starting point of this exhibition is a series of work by Regina Bogat, as this one, called The Phoenix and the Mountain. She did this series of painting in 1980, um, which was a very important moment of her career and life because that, that year her husband Alfred Jensen was dying. That's why she imagined this series around the phoenix, because she was aware that as the phoenix she will be reborn from her ashes. She was inspired by various mythologies, non-Western mythologies, and culture, uh, cultural elements she saw in Central America as during her trip to Peru with her husband, or she was also inspired by sacred mountains um, as in China, this kind of high peaks where you go for a pilgrimage to find a spiritual achievement. The show is not about the generation of artists, but yet as various generations of artists, like Jonathan Lasker, who was a very important figure from the, from the 80s, who had various paths for abstraction, one that is very known as is um, expressionist abstraction or the neo geo movement, and the show is about uh, artists who work in between these paths, who gather various elements of abstraction, use it as a possible language and not as a goal in itself. Um, Jonathan Lasker was a prominent figure of the 80s and who reached his maturity at that time. I think. Um, Noskovsky's work very much characterized this idea of incentric abstraction with this highly condensed painting that he did on small canvases of 16 by 22 inches. That is the format of almost all his works. He decided to use this small scale to avoid the giant scale of corporate artworks that you may find in, in bank entrance hall. By using this um, form that may appear forms that may appear as abstract, but who tells a story and have various uh, references in them. And the work of Lisa Beck, who is the youngest artist of the show, as I said before, um, the show gathers various generations of artists and she's among the youngest one. Emery Blackton is the oldest. What is interesting with Lisa Beck and her cosmic vocabulary is how she considers her works not as autonomous entities, but part of a bigger entity where uh, everything is related. Another important figure of the 80s is Harvey Quaidman, uh, known for, um, I would say, interesting approach to abstraction that was very much against the, the, cur the, the trends of abstraction at that time. He, he didn't go with the flow, if I may say, of Neo Geo or abstract, uh, or Expressionist abstraction. He followed a path that was the path of the early abstract painters with some metaphysical elements and the idea of sort of purity, but at the same time playing with impurity of form, as in this series of works called The Tip. And this is one of the last of the series that he will abandon in favor of the square that you may see in this flamboyant blue painting, playing with various textures and layers. This is someone who likes to experiment with pigments and textures. Very interestingly, Regina Bogart, who preferred to use acrylic instead of oil for practical reasons, because she was working from home and acrylic has the advantage of drying quickly, but um, she, she, she missed the texture of oil, so she said that that's why, one of the reasons why she used this, this uh, wood sticks that she, she, she was painting over. And it, I like also how she plays with various um, textures, more flat painting with more layers and plus the wood sticks.
after the death of her husband, Alfred Jensen, uh, Regina Bogat made these um, memory boxes where she could literally uh, put all her souvenirs from her late husband. Here there is a little map of Guatemala, which is the country where her husband was born. And they traveled in Central America together. Um, these little works were done by the outsider artist Emery Blackton, who worked on a giant installation in his barn in Nebraska from the 50s to the 80s. It's actually all, his production is one big installation called the Healing Machine. He was hoping that with this machine he could elevate illness and pain. So the idea was to gather various materials, especially metals and salts and powders, uh, in order to channel various energies from the earth to uplift them in order to, um, to heal. And he, one of the most interesting aspects of this uh, healing machine are these little paintings that were not conceived as actual artworks, but he was calling them my pretties, who were used piled one above each other as batteries that would enhance the healing powers of the machine. I think it's very exciting to see them next to this painting by um, Chris Martin called Temple. Uh, Chris Martin was also extremely interested in healing powers of art. And uh, in the 80s, he saw a retrospective of Joseph Beuys, who was also very much into healing powers of materials and art. He was very impressed by that, and he would also later work as an art therapist. I like how this work uses this kind of um, abstract, extremely geometric vocabulary of the temple, but somehow adds more impurity by this more gestural painting. And also this idea, it almost um, makes us think of a sunrise. I like to see this um, not so far from Lisa Beck's cosmic paintings. And I like to have this painting by Regina Bogart as end of the exhibition as it summarized the, the various mythologies and the spirituality of this um, path of abstraction that kind of is a bridge of the, on the edge between abstraction, figuration, and spirituality and more decorative aspect and also as a healing power of art and how art is also part of a certain reverse as it was for her.